Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. Today I will be covering the chapter 14 notes, slides 13 through 16, talking about strong versus weak acids and bases. Now, you've already seen this topic before, again, in that FET, in terms of strong and weak acids and bases. So strong acids and bases will disassociate disassociate, excuse me, completely, or 100% in aqueous solutions, and the reaction is not reversible. So you saw in the FET how there was an arrow going like this, and you had all product in the FET, okay? There were no reactants that were still present versus weak acids and bases. These only release a few hydrogen ions, okay? So acids release those hydrogen ions or that hydronium ions, that H plus or H3O plus. And bases only release a few hydroxide ions, which is that OH minus. Oftentimes this reaction is reversible. And when we have a reversible reaction, we use this arrow right here. And that means that you have some reactants still present, okay? And those will be your weak acids and bases. So that's the main difference between the two. Now I do have a list of some common strong acids and bases. So Starting with the acids, this list right here, those are all of your strong acids. Anything else that would be listed would be considered weak, okay? So you can see over here on this chart, all of the ones that are strong have that arrow going one way, okay? That again means that the reaction is not reversible and you'll have all of these ions be present. However, these ones over here, they are going to be your weak acids because they have that arrow going in both directions, which means the reaction is reversible. So you're still gonna have some reactants present in that solution. Now, the only strong bases are metal hydroxides. Again, hydroxides we already established. Those are things that have OH, that's what hydroxide is, and metal, of course, being that element that's in the front. So NaOH, KOH, CaOH, so sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, those are all examples of strong bases. The only weak bases are going to be compounds that contain nitrogen, which is N, and we call these amines. So NH3 is probably the most common example. So this is one that we haven't talked about. As I said previously, acids will be something that has an H in the front of it, and then bases will be something that ends in an OH. However, this is an example of something that's a base that does not have that OH present in it. So NH3, this is um, ammonium. Okay, or I'm sorry, ammonia. Ammonium's the ion. So ammonia, and when that disassociates, you get this, which is called an ammonium ion, and that is an example of a base. Now here's just a visual to represent that. Again, H3O plus and H plus are the same thing, because if this thing was in water and you had all of these hydrogen ions that disassociated, and it combined with this, you would get that H3O plus. That's why we say they're kind of synonymous with each other. So if you have a lot of those present, that's a really strong acid. The more of those you have, the more concentrated the acid is and the lower the pH is. Versus a base is going to have a high pH and it's gonna have a lot of those OH minus ions. So the more OH minus ions you have and the less H plus ions you have, 
the higher of a pH you will have. And that is a summary on strong acids and bases versus weak acids and bases.